So it's good to be with you again. Um, this time I think um, you guys will do me well by dropping your comments and your opinions and your um, observations on, um, on whatever you have. You can drop it at the comment section. So we'll be talking about the cashless policy and the Naira redesign. I mean, it's no game playing. Everybody already knows that um, the shortage of Naira in circulation within the economy. So what's happening? The CBN needs to be answering questions. The Nigerian security printing and minting needs to be answering questions. Why are people not being able to have access to cash? Uh, commercial banks actually sabotaging these new currencies or are the currencies actually not enough? Nigerians need to know what is happening. I mean, so we'll be talking about the cashless policy. Uh, a lot of people have called in to tell me that the cashless policy in itself is a very, very wonderful idea. Nigeria has beautiful policies on paper, but I mean, when it gets to implementation, implementation gets it all screwed up, you know? So we have a very beautiful policy at hand on the one hand and then on the other hand it's coming with a lot of pain it's coming with a lot of you know uh it's coming with a lot of um bitter pill to be swallowed it's coming with a lot of um how do they call it again in financial terms so why should people have to go through so much stress to access their own personal money i mean this is a rare case of um shortage of um naira notes in the most largest economy in west of africa and all of africa at large nigerian economy the number one economy in africa is suffering from shortage of naira notes not shortage of cash notes the um old naira notes were withdrawn from circulation by the central bank of nigeria and the central bank of nigeria has not been able to replace um, with new Naira notes and there's been a February deadline, February 10th and um, old Naira notes ceases to be legal tenders and then we have a crisis on our hands and um, we need to address it. So um, I should have thought before implementing this very laudable policy, I should have thought there should have been sensitization, mass sensitization, mass orientation, education you know awareness they should have informed all of the stakeholders the the the, the, the rural dwellers the the, the 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 farmers in the village you know the the, the local government the world level not just the city centers not just lagos abuja port Harcourt, not just kaduna city i'm talking of deep interior world level villages local governments where they don't even have a bank at the um world level they don't even have an atm at the world level or at the local government level i know of a state that has um 11 local governments and in all of the 11 local governments only four of the local governments have banks presence of financial institutions have um, ATM machines present the main seven local governments don't have any bank not even microfinance banks no ATM nothing POS operators are out of business there's no money it's a crunch it's a total crunch credit crunch it's peculiar it's never happened before all of my life growing up I've never seen a crunch as terrible as this i mean this crunch is so terrible you would always have people on the value chain that will tell you they don't collect cash they are not inculcated in the economy that will collect cash they are in the informal sector of the economy they are not in the formal sector they are not financially included in the formal sector of the economy and i thought mfla should have known this i thought any lay economic student in jesus one should have known this you don't bring cashless policy to a people that have been dealing in cash all their life and you intend to shove this policy down their throat it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that so there are there some sinister motives behind this cashless policy these are the things we need to uncover is this cashless policy targeted at putting politicians towards the election? It's another issue. Is it driven from the presidency that they actually don't want vote buying during the election from money bag politicians? I mean, let people be in the know. Let's know what is happening. I, for one, I believe it is a good legacy if President Buhari says he's retiring back to his 
Daura residents in peace. And he wants to leave a legacy behind for Nigerians where he was the first democratically elected Nigerian president to have conducted a free and fair president. Because all three times President Buhari contested, he felt he was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was, um, 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 what word do I use? What word do I use? He got up to the Supreme Court all three times because he felt he was unduly maligned and um, 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 pushed out of the um, race because of vote buying, corruption, accusations during elections. And President Buhari fought it all three times. So if this is a chance for President Buhari to say this time around there's no going to be vote buying because I've suffered injustice in the electoral system as a result of vote buying and this time I'm not going to condone vote buying. I mean it's a very laudable move. If that is what the president is doing with this, kudos. I really, 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 really cheer for you. I am really glad if that is what the president is doing. But we must understand that this comes with so much pain. It's excruciating. It's excruciating. People are getting so frustrated, so angry. Business has been crawling. Business has not been able to move. I mean, not everybody would accept transfer. Not everybody would, you know, would, would. I mean, this cashless policy would introduce the level of literacy and the level of illiteracy in the country. These are the things it's going to expose. I feel there should have been mass education. And this is where I would blame the National Orientation Agency. You should have mass educated the people. The CBN should have the, an arm of education where you educate the very, very, very most critical, important people in the sector, in, in the most critical sector of the economy, the farmers. There's no farmer in northern Nigeria today that will give you a bag of beans and you tell him Baba Inaso Yuma transfer, Inaso Turama Kudi Awaya. Where is the Baba going to start taking you serious for? No, farmers don't accept transfer. And these are the most critical people in the economy, the farmers. How do you expect a farmer that is over 65 years of age, that farmed so many beans, he has so many bags of beans, he doesn't have any form of formal education, he probably does not have a bank. If he has a bank, he does straight transactions and not um, online transfer. He doesn't have a mobile banking app. He doesn't know any short code to. He doesn't be, oh my goodness. There's a crisis. Drop your um, opinion. Drop your comments. What you think, what you feel. Let's discuss. Let's have some discussions. Then um, we'll improve this on how you can call in during the live and streaming. So um, drop your opinions at the comment. Let's let's you know let's dialogue. I'll bring you more while we're You have my word.